we welcome you to ESPN College Football on ABC under gray skies here in Seattle. The boats have arrived out on Lake Washington. They've been tailgating, but now the fans have headed inside Husky Stadium for the Pac-10 opener between these two, the Washington Huskies. Set to take the field against the number three team in the nation, the Trojans of USC. And the lingering question all week, will it be Matt Barkley, the freshman sensation, or Aaron Court, will be the starting quarterback for Pete Carroll? Well, the suspense, it goes on, at least officially, because Pete Carroll has chosen not to make an official announcement. We'll have to wait and see who the starting quarterback is. Hi, everybody. Glad you're with us. Terry Gannon, along with David Nori, Quint Kesnick down on the field. It's awfully loud in here, David. You look at the situation with the quarterbacks. Barkley's got the bad shoulder. We've watched them both yesterday in the walkthrough. Today in warm-ups, what's your sense? I don't think he's going to be able to go. In fact, I think the shoulder's going to be a factor into early next week and maybe next week's game against Washington State. Only able to throw the ball about 40, 50% velocity. And what a place to get your first starting snap at quarterback. Husky Stadium, Seattle, Washington, Aaron Corp. This is going to be a big challenge. There have been a lot of quarterbacks, a lot of experienced, great quarterbacks over the years in the Pac-10 that have come into this stadium, and they've been overwhelmed by the noise and the atmosphere. It's going to be a great challenge for Corp. Like a David Noy with UCLA back in the day. You know what this noise is like. How about on the other side? You've got a Washington team that broke a 15-game losing streak with the win against Idaho last week, and the reason for the optimism here is not just Steve Sarkeesian taking over as head coach, but number 10, Jake Locker. Well, we talked to Pete Carroll earlier this week, and you know this Trojan team had Terrell Pryor, the great combination yeah. run and pass threat last week for Ohio State. They say Jake Locker is hands down a bigger challenge to handle at the quarterback position. I think he's the best quarterback right now in the Pac-10. He's got a strong arm. He's learning the drop back game, but he's really dangerous with his legs. Big statement, best in the Pac-10. Here come the Huskies. Sarkeesian, the former offensive coordinator for Pete Carroll. We'll hear from them both in just a moment. The sun breaking through here in Seattle, getting set for USC and Washington. Steve Sarkeesian, Pete Carroll, one of the main storylines. Those two going at it as head coaches just a short time ago. Quick Kesnick caught up with both of them. The friendly banter continues uh, this week. How would you best describe the communication between you two? Uh, none. <laughs> Not really. No, we, didn't, we didn't talk much at all. We didn't do anything. Uh, conference rivals going forward. How does the friendship survive? Well, we get to play them once a year, you know, and we recruit against them a little bit, but the bottom line is we got to play 11 other games a year, and that, so it's one game this week. You've said that uh, competition among friends is most meaningful to you. Why is that? Uh, it just always has been, you know. I think because of respect and how much I like the guys, you know, I, I, I like to beat the heck out of them, you know, and I know they feel the same way about it, so it, it's... It's uh, really a, a sign, to me, it's a sign of respect towards them. Gentlemen, thank you. Good luck. A couple of texts earlier in the week. They didn't talk, but they were texting each other. Yeah, that's, that's the way they do it these days. <laughs> you don't get on the phone and, and talk to people. You, you text them. Washington won the toss. They defer, so it'll be the Trojans who will get the ball first. Joe McKnight, about three yards deep, takes a knee, and we'll see. Quick Kesnick was just told a moment ago it will be Aaron Corp getting the start. The sophomore, 6'3", 200 pounder from Villa Park, California, Orange Lutheran High School. He's had some playing time, but now David, his first career start for the Trojans. Now remember, he was the starter three days into fall camp. He cracked that bone in his leg, and you know, he's made a name for himself not making mistakes. He went through the entire spring practice drills with only one interception. We'll see how much they decide to keep it on the ground or gamble, though, with Corp as the quarterback. Joe McKnight has had flu-like symptoms through the week. He is getting a start. They're going to throw on first snap. They swing it out to McKnight, drop behind the line of scrimmage for a loss. Bonzel McDowell Jr. was right in his face. And check out our impact players in this one. For the Trojans, we start with McKnight, who's been sensational. He was great on that last drive against Ohio State last yeah, week. He's been slowed with the flu bug. It's, it's a big question as to how much they can use him this afternoon. And then Damian Williams yeah, coming off that huge Rose Bowl game a year ago against Penn State. And then Everson Griffin, a guy I think might be the most talented defensive end in the country. Taylor Mays, the outstanding safety, is out with a knee injury. He was in street clothes, came out, tried to give it a go, and could 
play action. Court throws on the run. He's got Damian Williams near a first down, maybe just short, about a yard short. Williams with his first catch of the afternoon. There is a penalty marker down. And it's at the end of the play. After the play, personal foul, played hit out of bounds on the defense number eight. The 15 yard penalty, first down. Jack Foliard, our referee this afternoon. How about the swagger of Jeremy Bates calling plays for USC? Comes out with two straight pass calls. And there's the hit late on the sideline. And in terms of the Washington defense, remember another guy who worked for Pete Carroll, Nick Holt, is the defensive coordinator now for Washington. Sarkeesian brought him up here. There are five different members of this staff who used to be at USC. First and ten. They're going to keep it on the ground. McKnight busts through, close to another first down. So you open up throwing the football, David. Does it surprise you at all? It does, and that's a nice little wrinkle offensively for USC. You figure coming into the game, they're going to protect Corp. They're going to lean on that big, talented offensive line, especially starting this drive inside your own 20-yard line. And Jeremy Bates comes out calls pass plays on the first two plays from scrimmage. Jeremy Bates running the offense. John Morton actually the offensive coordinator. Pavili in motion, the fullback, as they set up now out of the eye. McKnight spins his way to that first down line. Now, Joe had migraines on Wednesday, did not practice, then flu-like symptoms just was sore everywhere. You know, like you have the flu on Thursday. Yesterday for the walkthrough, he was out there but didn't actually take part. So Pete Carroll said afterward he'll be fine, but not quite 100%. Of course, they do have a few guys behind him, you know. Yeah, yeah. A uh, uh, full stable of backs as we look at Nick Holt in his first year as defensive coordinator here to Washington. First and 10. Just inside the 45, the long count. Corp's going to hand it off. Big time hole for Havili, the fullback to the outside. Inside the 10, finally brought down by Justin Glenn, the free safety. But a gain of 38 for Stanley Havili. Well, Terry, you were talking about how loaded USC is at the tailback position. I think they have one of the most dynamic fullbacks in all of college football. And look at the cutback. He's going to find the seam. Waits, that was a zone run call to a fullback. The speed and the ability to pick that hole up with his vision. He's one of the great fullbacks catching the ball out of the backfield as well. Does a little bit of everything for the Trojans. First and goal from the seven. McKnight looking for a seam. He's got a big one. Easily into the end zone, Joe McKnight. Well, that offensive line, which just may be the best in the country, clearing running lanes down the field for McKnight. And David, they kind of made it look easy on this drive. Well, yeah, this was a statement drive. If there ever was one to open up a game at Husky Stadium, offensive line taking control of the line of scrimmage. McKnight finishing off the drive. What a beautiful way to start your career as a starter. Jordan Congdon on for the extra point. A little bit of a high snap. Gary Green doing a nice job getting the ball down. McKnight into the end zone. We've seen that a few times. Huskies don't want to see much more of it. Six plays, 80 yards, just like that. It's 7-0 Trojans over Washington. Jacob Hartman on for the kick. Jordan Colt. Down throw a block for Richardson. Springs it to the 31, so good return. It's Pope on that return, 27 yards, and right now let's go get an update, and we head to our Times Square studios in New York for that. Hey there, everyone. I'm Matt Weiner here in New York, here to keep you on top of everything happening across the nation. And we begin with this Taco Bell update from Austin Stadium, a chance for redemption for Oregon against Utah today. This is Walter Thompson, the third, 78 yards. The Ducks have the jump, 7-0 early. First and 10 for Jake Locker and the Huskies. Operating from the 30. Locker on the run, loses the football. Washington has it. 
and loses a couple of yards, but that was a dangerous play. Christian Tupo was in there all over Locker in a hurry. Uh, it was a dangerous play, not only from a security of the ball standpoint, but maybe losing your quarterback standpoint. Watch Jarrell Casey, number 91. Uh, he comes and delivers a blow with that top of his shoulder pad, and uh, uh, Jarrell Casey has really become a factor inside in a hurry for USC early in this season. So Locker, the Pac-10 freshman of the year a couple of seasons ago had the thumb injury last year. Going to hand it off to his running back, Chris Hope, all the way out to the 40-yard line. And a first down for the Huskies. Check out, David, our impact players for Washington this afternoon. Now you look at Chris Paul. He is one of the more talented backs in the Pac-10. Showed a lot of speed against LSU in the opener. James Johnson, a true freshman, also had a big game against the Tigers. And then E.J. Savannah, the linebacker, outside runs as well as any linebacker in the Pac-10 conference. And Polk, a guy who's from Southern California, originally committed to USC and then changed his mind to come up here to Seattle. And get the call on first down. Back to the line of scrimmage. That's it. Christian Tupo again in on the stop. So the Huskies are going to have to get something out of their run game. They're going to have to keep... Jake Locker out of obvious dropback situations, and that's easier than said than done against this USC defense. Very few offenses have been able to do that over the eight-year era of Pete Carroll. The Mario Middleton in at tight end right now. Jordan Polk, one of the wideouts. Quick drop, quick throw. Locker, what a catch. James Johnson coming back to the sidelines for that one. How about the hands? of a true freshman from Valley Center, California. Hey, Quint, what about this crowd here at Husky Stadium? It's ear-piercing decibel levels down here. At times when this place gets cranked up, it's too loud to even hear yourself think. Just how loud is it? It's the loudest stadium in all of college football, surprising as it may seem. Back in 1992, recorded at 133 decibel level. That's higher than both Death Valleys at Clemson <laughs> and LSU. In fact, I talked to Les Miles last week as you see Locker sprinting out. Les Miles at LSU said it's strictly the acoustics here, and I'm sure David can tag on, but the sound bounces off the roofs and then back down onto the field. Yeah, so much of the, the seats, so many of the seats are between, you know, right on the field. You got the, uh, the metal roof metal seats and what is it like for a quarterback well these stands they're vertical and, and as you said terry it's right on top of you it's it's been a main staple going all the way back to the glory years of don james and this stadium feeds off big plays they feed off their defense and turnovers a real big challenge for a team to come into seattle second and 10 from the 49 Holt using his legs, powering his way inside the 45. Brought down by Malcolm Smith, an outside linebacker from Northridge, California. So how, about, how about the SC defense and all the guys that they've had to replace? Eight starters off this defensive unit moving on to the NFL. They not only moved on to the NFL, they all went in the NFL draft. <laughs> Can you imagine that? Losing eight starters and they all go in the draft. Uh, and, and you look at the talent, especially at that linebacker level that Pete Carroll has reloaded, and, and I don't think they miss a beat. This is potentially the most talented group in the country. And in a way, they lose nine starters because Sharice Wright would have started at cornerback, and he's out for academic reasons. Walker under pressure is going to go down. Back at the 43. Everson Griffin, you mentioned him in the open. Got there quickly. Everson Griffin was such a big factor last week late against Ohio State, and his speed is just too much to handle for most offensive tackles in college football. Had a big freshman year, let down a little bit last year, but he is back on the radar. So Will Mayhan on for the punt. Junior from Bakersfield. Junior college transfer. Low almost lost it. Damian Williams. Gonna watch that one sail, take a Washington bounce. There is a flag out at the 22. So a good punt from Mahan of 36 yards and keeping it in play. And we'll see what the flag's all about. Now it strikes you, we've been to many 
During the kick, illegal block in the back, number 15, the receiving team. The penalty is forced from the end of the kick, half the distance, first down. All right, so uh, Pete not liking that one. Back to Husky Stadium in a moment. So if you have to land that water plane on land, how do you do it? That's my question. I think they have wheels that come out of the bottom. Do they? Yeah, just in case. All right. USC backed up. First down. You're going to keep it on the ground. What a hole. Huge hole from McKnight across the 30, out to the 33. And dare I say it, you and I could have run through that. Yeah, th this is an offensive line that is coming out and really physically dominating the line of scrimmage. The USC is gashing Washington early in the run game. Wow. The one guy you don't want to turn loose in space, it's number four. Actually, pretty good tackle by Justin Glenn, who was questionable. Coaches really, for Washington, worried about those two safeties. Justin Glenn and Nate Williams both have hamstring injuries. McKnight spread out left. Here he comes across the middle of the field. Court looking for him, throws right into double coverage, though. That one could have been picked off. Donald Butler had the best chance of coming up with it. Yeah, this is what Pete Carroll does not want from Aaron Corp in this game. He's got a seven-point lead. His team's moving the ball effectively, and he tries to fit a ball into a running back and a crowd of four defenders. And if Aaron Corp can just manage this game and play to his team's strengths, and USC has a great shot of moving on the next week and staying in the national title hunt. Second and 10 from the 32. Stephon Johnson, now the running back. Quick out, Damian Williams, his second catch, gets across the 40, he's loose. Out to midfield. Boy, he'll make that first guy miss most of the time. A gain of 17. And Matt Barkley, one of the heroes last week, putting together one of the best drives that well, the Trojan fans will remember in some time. Maybe the Bush push drive in uh, South Bend, the other one. But uh, it was a great winning drive at the end against Ohio State. Look at the play selection so far. And, and again, impressed that uh, Jeremy Bates calling the plays. Not afraid to put the ball in the air early. Johnson again, who's also had flu-like symptoms this week. There he goes. Inside the 31, got a beat, and he falls down. Stephon Johnson who's already gone for four touchdowns this year. That's a gain of 27. So McKnight had a gain of 25 on the first play from scrimmage in this series, and now a gain of 27. Yeah, and watch the block that Pum Parsons gets on the outside here. I mean, that is a great job by a right guard pulling and leading the way for Stephon Johnson. And right now, Justin Glenn, the free safety, is making too many tackles. 25 yards down the field. On the ground again, Johnson short game. That's it. Good pursuit. Quentin Richardson got there to trip him up. Richardson, number 28, a, a cornerback, one of those guys, you had to feel for him a little bit. In the locker room after the win against Idaho a week ago, he was pressed by the media and whether he thought they would win this week. And he, he basically guaranteed a win and then wanted to get it right back afterwards. You know, sometimes as a young football player, the media will tend to lead you in some tough directions. and. Now Steve Sarkeesian was very understanding of his young quarterback. And Pete Carroll, when asked about it, said, ah, no big deal. McKnight spread out again. Going to throw to him. Here's Joe looking to make a move and can't do it. Swarmed under quickly. E.J. Savannah. On the hit. The guy who had eight tackles a week ago in that win over Idaho. And last year did not play for a variety of reasons. Was their leading tackler back in 2007. Yeah, the, the question mark is defense for the Huskies, but at the linebacker level, they're very talented. Foster, Butler, Savannah, they can all run and they can all make play. Husky fans sensing a big third down play. Court. Inside handoff, nothing doing. Couple yard gain, that's it for Havili. Well, it's no secret. Washington's going to line up with eight near the line of scrimmage. They're going to try to outnumber the USC blockers. And the game plan for Nick Holt, the defensive coordinator, is simple. 
He's going to say, hey, if Aaron Corp beats us, we tip our cap to him. And really, Terry, USC's been pretty effective early in this game running against an eight-man front. Congdon, a transfer from Nebraska. This would be his longest of the season, and he gets it. Just inside that right upright. Two drives for Pete Carroll's squad. Ten points on the board here in Seattle. You know it'll be a tough test for the defense of uh, Washington. Last year, a big-time struggle. They got most of those guys back. Now, they try to go to work on offense. Brent Richardson going to bring it back this way. Still up. Almost got outside, but another good return out to the 32. Ball was loose late, but it's Washington football. Reminder, celebrating its fifth year, sponsoring the Good Hands Field Goal Nets. All State makes contributions to participating universities' general scholarship funds for each field goal and an extra point kick. To date, All State has contributed more than $1.8 million in scholarship money. All right, first and ten for Jake Walker and the Washington offense. Uh, what have they learned so far in this one, David? Well, I think they've learned about USC speed, and I think they've learned a little bit about Mr. Everson Griffin. SC can bring pressure a number of different ways. This time out of the backfield, Paul Homer, the fullback, carrying people with him. He's got a first down. Homer, the senior from Omaha. Now remember, this is a Washington team that not only broke the losing streak last week, and so much of the culture has changed with Steve Sarkeesian, but also they played the number nine team in the nation tough here. LSU to open up the season. 31-23, the final in that one. And Aguilar, Jermaine Kirsch, the wideouts. Here comes Aguilar. They get it. Go straight up the middle and not for much at all. Jarrell Casey. How about that? The USC fans remember Cedric Ellis and how dominant he was just a couple years ago from the inside uh. defensive tackle position. The number 91, Jarrell Casey, is going to make some people forget about Cedric Ellis. Uh, this guy is a force, and he stood toe-to-toe -to -toe with that Buckeye offensive line last week and made some dominant plays. Hey, David, if you're Chris Polk, you're seeing that develop, you're thinking, you know what, don't hand it off. <laughs> Keep it, will you? <laughs> Second and 13. Walker out of the shotgun. Here comes Polk again along the right side. Some power at the end. This is a... Quint, this is a defense, too, that's playing without maybe its best player, Taylor Mays, today. Yeah, Taylor Mays is a game-time scratch. He was injured against Ohio State, had an MRI in his right knee. It was a mildly sprained MCO. Uh, did some light running during the week, Wednesday, Thursday. You guys saw him in the walkthrough yesterday doing some agilities with a brace. Came out early with their director of rehab, John Meyer, but just too much pain as he was doing agility. So U USC misses their rangy center fielder at the free safety spot. And you know, growing up here in Seattle, he was going to do everything he could to make it. So McAllister getting the start. He's had that hip injury. Walker throws. Got his man. Johnson with the catch. At the 36, first down Huskies. 16-yard gain. This is a true freshman. And he's doing a great job of sitting down in the window and zone coverage. The timing is perfect from the pocket. And I've been impressed at times early in this game the way that this offensive line has held up in pass protection. Now, you talk to the coaches, and they feel good about what this offensive line is going to become, but they're still learning. And, of course, it's an entirely new system this year, too. Holt. Nope. May have lost the yard. That's about it. But you've got, you got juniors across that line, a senior and a sophomore, so some experience. Ben Osai, the senior from Bakersfield, California, over the years, the Huskies have always had the big, physically huge offensive lines. Uh, they've always leaned heavily on the run game and their defense, and, and I think they're a year or two away from developing that same ki kind of offensive line here in Seattle. Second and 12, Walker out of the gun again. Over the middle, wide open, Devin Aguilar. Big catch all the way down to the 22. They'll move the chains again. 
So this offense now and Jake Locker starting to find its rhythm. Don't forget tonight, ABC Saturday Night Football. Good matchup. Looking for a little revenge. Colt McCoy, the number two ranked Texas Longhorns. Mike Leach's Texas Tech Red Raiders. ABC Saturday Night Football presented by Southwest Airlines. 8 o'clock Eastern, 5 Pacific time. I would say revenge. Red Raiders knocked the Longhorns out of the national title game a year ago. Texas Tech, though, 0-22 against top five teams on the road. Yeah, it's been ugly for Texas Tech down in Austin. Walker wants to throw. It's got his man wide open inside the 10, all the way down to the four, Jory Ferguson. And it'll be first and goal Huskies. Well, he's finding seams in that defense, and he looks awfully comfortable right now, David. Well, this is a critical drive being put together by Jake Locker in this offensive line. He's getting some great work from his backs and his wide receivers in the pass game. You don't want to lose touch with USC. You want to make sure that you keep this crowd in the game. And down 10 points, Washington has responded. Bogerson, just a sophomore from Kent Washington. He played safety last year. Aguilar in motion. And then they're going to blow the whistle. Timeout. Washington. So Sarkeesian, who was a heck of a quarterback himself back at BYU, will talk things over with his quarterback. And you know, you, you think back to those days when he was running the show for the Cougars. That year, 1996, they were 14 and 1, and their one loss came where? It came here, right here. <laughs> In fact, you know, you think about players, they don't forget. Uh, we, we were joking with them yesterday about what a struggle it was and what a struggle it can be playing in this uh, stadium. He said, oh, yeah, I know all about it. He said, I remember, I still have nightmares about that day playing against Washington with the noise here. Well, and, and he, what he did remember was just how difficult it was. He had great numbers that day. I mean, he had a big passing day, but it was so difficult to communicate. And you know, when things start going downhill on you at Husky Stadium, you get your teammates looking at each other, and it's it's an environment unlike any other in the Pac-10, and very difficult for a quarterback and an offense to have success throughout a game. The blocker, look at the numbers on him so far. First drive not successful, the second one knocking on the door right now. First and goal, he's looking to run it, and he can do that, and does. Touchdown, Washington. you were talking about. And that's the option you have if you're Doug Nussmeyer, the offensive coordinator, or Sarkeesian with a quarterback like Locker. He does that as well as anyone. Eric Folk on for the extra point. Guess what? He's got a game here. The Pac-10 opener for the Huskies and the Trojans. Locker takes it to the end zone. It's 10-7 Trojans. Trojans back. McKnight has to go high into the air for this one. Going to bring it back out. Joe's looking for a seam. Breaks through. Up close to the 25. And maybe a bit banged up right now. So he'll hobble off. Aaron Cork, if you weren't with us, got the start today. Matt Barkley, the, the freshman who was one of the heroes last week has that bone bruise in his right shoulder and it was questionable all week long Pete Carroll would not make an announcement even uh, earlier today went through warm-ups Barkley through so did Corp obviously and uh, right before game time Aaron Corp named the starter Anthony McCoy the big tight end in motion on first down Cork to throw, has got his man, it's Williams again near another first down. Third catch of the afternoon for Damian. Now, how about Joe McKnight now on that return? Watch that left ankle. Well, first of all, he made a, a nice catch at the goal line to secure the football. Oh, there it is, and he rolled it. This is field turf, and you can tell it, it didn't quite give, so that'll do it. We head to the second quarter. Good ball game going on here in Seattle. 
First and 10 Trojans at the 36 as we open up the second quarter. 10-7 USC over Washington. Allen Bradford, the tailback, gets the handoff. Good hole. Good game. Up to the 45. So McKnight goes out with that ankle, which we saw on the kickoff, and we'll have to check on him. He's being worked on on the sideline. But, you know, the, the field turf, David, is much better than the Astro turf used to be, the old Astro turf. But if that's a normal field, regular grass field, I'm not sure that happens. No, you very rarely see those types of, of rolls of the ankle on a grass field. And I always preferred playing on grass. I think if you ask any football player, they'd, they'd give you the same response. Bradford, the tailback again on second and two, a big game. Well, they've opened up. It, it seems redundant because you say it time and again, some huge holes. This offensive line for USC and a gain of 11. Well, we talked so much about Joe McKnight, Stephon Johnson, of course, C.J. Gable, a, a starter a year ago for a great portion of the year for USC. But, you know, if I'm a defensive coordinator in the Pac-10 conference, I get a little bit worried if you line up and, and put Allen Bradford in the backfield and have him run the ball downfield at you. Uh, it, he is a... a the type of running back that is a 30 to 35 carry a game back for any other team. But it's not something that Pete Carroll normally does. Here goes Bradford bouncing off a one, and he's going to lose a couple. Loss of five. Talia Crichton was the first man to get there, but he had help. The Huskies are using numbers, and they, they have seen USC have a lot of success early in this game on the ground. They are selling out. The safeties are creeping up. And it's leaving these defensive backs, especially the cornerbacks on islands. It's, it's a matter of whether Aaron Cork can exploit that down the field. Remember, USC's, they're missing their, their best deep threat, Ronald Johnson. Got 126 yards on the ground so far, the Trojans do. Quick toss. Bradford looking for a block. Cuts back to the 46. That'll do it. But it's a game plan that you would agree with, right? I mean, you're going to make court beat you because you know the tailbacks with that offensive line can beat you. Uh, defensive coordinators almost to a man across the country. The last thing they want to see, the, the thing that makes them wake up at night in a cold sweat, is an offense controlling the ball on the ground on them throughout an afternoon. And Nick Holt pulling out all the stops. So that's the second time out that Washington has burned. Uh, I think Mr. Holt's a little bit upset. <laughs> Go back and check on him in a moment, Seattle. Fumble Ruski. I mean, that has legs. That has staying power. Not much has surpassed that over the years. Yeah, Turner Gill, that's not easy to put the football on the ground and, and leave it still for a big offensive line. Crowd into it for a big third down play. Complete. Good move inside the 40. Looks to be shy of the first down, though. Bryce Butler, who's the third receiver, comes in for David Osbury and Damian Williams with the catch. Dean Steinkuhler, by the way, drafted in the first round by the Oilers. Played seven seasons in the NFL, and next week we've got number 27 coming your way. 3.30 Eastern time. Steinkuhler, they sell those in the pubs, right, here in Seattle? <laughs> yeah. Sounds a lot like a beer. So it's fourth and one, and oh, what a shot. Pete Carroll is going to go for it. Stephon Johnson right behind Stanley Havili out of the eye. Johnson got a first down. Lost the football. Washington jumps on it. Husky ball. Justin Glenn, the free safety, who's had to make a number of tackles, was involved there, scrambling for the football. If you're going to beat a USC team, you're going to need some help. Stephon Johnson, a nice job finding the hole, picking up the first down. Looked like he was covering the football with both arms. But Foster, the outside linebacker, that's a nice play. And Glenn heads up covering the football for the Huskies. Mason Foster, one of those three linebackers that Steve Sarkeesian and Nick Holt want to talk about first in terms of their defense. That's the strength of that defense. And Pete trying to figure out 
if that ball indeed did come out before he hit the ground, and it did. And Pete Carroll, the master of the fourth down. I mean, is there a, any other head coach in college football that rolls the dice as much as Pete Carroll on fourth down? And, no. I, and I'll tell you what, the exception of the national title game against Texas, After it usually review, comes up seven really four. On the field is confirmed. First down. Foster with the hit. The junior from Seaside, California. They've got so many players from Southern California on this roster, and you got to believe Steve Sarkeesian's going to get even more. Now Washington is doing everything they can to get defenders up along the line of scrimmage. They're working against maybe the best offensive line in football, and as I said, Terry, they're going to need some help. They're going to have to count on some sloppy ball handling this afternoon by USC. First and ten. Hope, the tailback, gets the call, fights through. Galippo had a hold of him, but he carried Chris with him for an extra couple of yards, a gain of nine on first down. So you talk about the USC offensive line. Don't sell this Washington offensive line short. Well, they've had some success up front, and this defensive front for USC, talent across the board. I've been really impressed by Chris Hull the tailback uh, and you flip on the game film you watch him against LSU and he was pulling away from some defensive backs he he has some SEC type talent and we got to play a couple of games last year and he had the shoulder injury so a redshirt freshman going to run again straight into the line should have the first down and the clock continues to run the last drive an impressive one for Jake Locker running the show. And of course, Locker, a junior, but when you talk about Southern California kids on their way here, how about the one that got a big win last night? Nick Montana, Joe Montana's kid, the quarterback, Oaks Christian, taking on Skyline, come up from uh, Westlake Village, well, you know, outside of LA. You know, the junior, Trevor Gretzky, is in line to take over the starting spot at quarterback next year and he is a heck of a baseball player and maybe even a better quarterback of course Wayne and Janet Gatsby's son and Will Smith's son a wide receiver on that team <laughs> that is amazing Hope wrapped up behind the line of scrimmage Michael Morgan there first will be a key defender today as you try to keep an eye on Locker and, and he's going to shadow him yeah but he, Morgan is a 4-3 40 speed outside linebacker and he is the fastest of the linebackers in this USC core he is just tremendous running down plays and USC fans are going to hear a lot from this young man in the next couple of years when well, you think of who they lost uh, Luga pushing I mean that's it you know you're trying to oh, ball on the turf but flags out first in the whistle USC losing three of their four star starters in the defensive Fires line. The snap, false start. Number 79, the offense. Five yard penalty. Second down. Ben Osai, the senior from Bakersfield. I talked to Ken Norton, who was a teammate of mine back at UCLA, and of course now the assistant head coach on Pete Carroll's staff. He's in charge of the linebackers. He's done such a tremendous job at USC, and, and I talked to him about is outside linebacker Morgan. He said, are you kidding me? I mean, this guy's 4-3. <laughs> you know, Kevin Norton Jr. in his own right, one of the great college and NFL linebackers to ever play the game. You know, when you greeted Ken Norton Jr. yesterday, uh, Pete Carroll just shook his head and said, that <laughs> Bruin love is just nauseating. It was a love fest. You can't take it. <laughs> timeout taken again by Washington. So they're out of timeouts here in the first. We'll step away. Turn the clock back to the late 1950s. It was right here in Seattle at Garfield High School. And a young kid by the name of Jimi Hendrix is buying his first electric guitar. He's also getting ready to flunk his first class in music. Now, as you might imagine, Jimi couldn't read written music. He taught himself to play the guitar upside down, left-handed. But the sounds that would come out of that guitar in the years ahead, they would forever change the landscape of rock and roll. 
Yeah, Jimi Hendrix, Huskies fans looking for a little purple haze this afternoon against the Trojans. I want to know, who is the music teacher who flunked Jimi Hendrix? Come on. We're going to have to look into that. Come on. We'll God. get our research team on that. David, musical journey. We had Louis Armstrong last week, and here we uh, got little Jimmy. Hulk runs right into that stout defensive line, and guess who first? Jarrell Casey. All right, continuing on in that vein with Jimi Hendrix here in Seattle, our Aflac trivia question. In 1967, Jimmy was the unlikely, and that's the key, opening act for which band's summer tour? And this is as unlikely as, I mean, it, they're, they're, it's ridiculous. I'm not even going to go there. Well, you know, I've already quizzed you. <laughs> Your knowledge is wide in music terms. You know it. Third and 17. Locker. Back to the gun. And movement along the right side again. Cody Hobbin, I believe, the man who jumped Full up. Full start. Number 71, the offense. Five yard penalty. Third down. Steve Sarkeesian. Very, very wily, very sharp as a play caller. He understands here you got third and a mile coming up. He, first priority is for his offense to take care of the football. And you have to be okay with punting the ball away to USC. And Washington's got enough of their run game going early. They've controlled enough clock in this game that they shouldn't be worried about punting the ball away from time to time against this great USC team. And what you're saying is don't do anything stupid on third and 22. Exactly. <laughs> Blocker. We'll see if he listens. Yeah. Pitch to Polk. Can't get outside. Well, good pursuit, and that's the guy we were talking about a moment ago. Michael Morgan with that speed and outside linebacker. Now look at him. He looks like a wide receiver. He looks like one of those big wide receivers we've seen at you know, Keyshawn Johnson or a, a Mike Williams or Patrick Turner. Playing outside linebacker. Wow. Yeah. Will Mahan on for the punt. And Damian Williams back at his own 31. Trojans don't come after Mayhem. Pretty good punt. Very good. Williams slip, and there are flags everywhere as he goes to the turf. A 51 yard punt by Will Mayhem. Yeah, I think this is going to hurt field position for the Trojans. In the last couple of drives, they've been backed up after penalties. And that's a big factor with Aaron Corp getting his first start. You, the comfort level drops drastically the closer you get under the shadow of your own goalpost. And it affects your play calling as well. During the return, illegal block in the back on the return team, number 46. 10-yard penalty, first down. So the Trojan offense back to work. Joe McKnight will be out there. We'll give you the Affleck trivia question when we come back, too. Here's a hint. They were part of a TV show. Back in Seattle, first and 10. USC, Joe McKnight. The ankle's okay. He goes back to work. Court on the run. Williams can't haul it in. So it brings up second and 10. All right, the Affleck trivia question. Thank you. 1967, Jimi Hendrix was the unlikely opening act for which band's summer tour? They were a TV show. How do you put these two together? Well, my first guess was the Beach Boys, and then I said, Terry, please don't tell me it was the Monkees. The <laughs> Monkees? I mean, you got to be kidding me. I mean, that's like Eddie Van Halen opening for the Jonas Brothers. I mean, it just doesn't work. Or Neil Sedaka. <laughs> I mean, come on. But it's true. Come on. It didn't end in a good way, though. Well, he ended up headlining Woodstock, so uh, he wasn't an opening act for long. Second and ten. Court, straight drop, throws, dangerous pass. Batted down, almost intercepted. Mason Foster was out there. Well, I'm beginning to sense that Aaron Corp is a little uncomfortable, especially with his field position. You know, USC came out on that first down play on the bootleg. Didn't have a good feel on that play. He is struggling a little bit with his confidence level right now here in the, in the second quarter. There's Matt Barkley who came out. He threw yesterday a little bit during walkthrough, threw during warm-ups, and Pete Carroll said we're going with Aaron Corp. The USC has to be careful with the ball here. Play clock running down. They're going to burn a timeout. 
Washington out of timeout. Pete Carroll calling his first. While we have a moment, let's get a uh, sports center right now from John Saunders. John? All right, Sports Center right now presented by Sprint. Physical game between Tennessee and Florida, as you'd expect. Tim Tebow ramming his way in for his 46th career rushing touchdown. Down to tie for second all-time in the SEC. 10-3 Gators. Now back here is Matt Weiner giving us that update. Not John, but uh, third and 10 coming up for USC. So Washington after the first fumble, David, not able to take advantage, but they punted away, and now they've got a little bit of a difficult, difficult circumstance for this Trojan offense. Well, this game has definitely turned here in the second quarter. USC has to be vigilant with their important quarterback here in this third and long situation. Here comes the crowd. Corp throws behind his intended receiver and incomplete. Bryce Butler was the man there. But it brings up fourth and ten. Well, that's a dangerous play because even if he hits Bryce Butler, USC's not going to pick up the first down. Matt Barkley pacing with that bruised shoulder. And not a lot of good things can happen on that play. And again, Aaron Corp looking uncomfortable behind center. And USC has had some punting problems. Billy O'Malley on. Jory Fogerson, dangerous. Well, it comes up the field, that one, but uh, good field position at the 46. A punt of just 37 yards as O'Malley tried to get that one off quickly. Our Pacific Life game summary. If you weren't with us, Trojans took the ball and marched right down the field on their opening series. It was Joe McKnight capping off a six-play, 80-yard drive, but then Jake Locker, they had first and goal a couple of plays, and Locker took it in from four yards. So eight plays, 68 yards to get one back for Washington, also a field goal for USC. But right now, Aaron Corp, you saw Matt Barkley come over and say, hey, keep your head up here. We're trying to get on track. Locker to work. Throws under pressure. Ferguson tried for the one-handed grab, incomplete. Christian Tupo applying the pressure on Locker. Yeah, this is the type of physical talent that Jake Locker has. He's retreating, two defenders in his face, and he just snaps the ball outside into the flat area. And most quarterbacks, you'd say, no way. You know, we don't want you making that throw, but Jake Locker is still able to be safe with the football thrown off that back foot. Gregory Christine, left guard, is the man they're working on who's shaken up. Here's a guy who was barely on the depth chart when Sarkeesian came in. Really liked him in the spring, liked his work ethic, uh, and he's done everything they've asked of him. And here, former walk-on earning a starting nod. Yeah, he was buried in the depth chart, and uh, one of the real feel-good stories of the new Sarkeesian regime. The thing, you talk to Pete Carroll about Steve Sarkeesian, and all joking aside, which, you know, most of the time that's what it is, but he said, look, he's already changed the culture. Though. He's changed the belief. They believe they can win. Doesn't hurt to have this man running the show. Walker, quick throw. Fulgerson, balls on the deck. Incomplete. Kevin Thomas was there for the hard hit. Now, these are a couple of premier corners lining up on defense for USC. And Thomas, what a close on this play. Now he breaks on the receiver like he means it. And look at Heverson Griffin, defensive end, getting all the way out on the sideline. How many defensive ends could be used the way they use Everson Griffin? Well, this is a big zone pressure team, so you're going to see defensive linemen occasionally drop into pass coverage. They really like to do that with 93, obviously, because of his mobility, the way he can run. Six foot three, 280 pounder getting out into the flat area. Fogerson, the man down, the sophomore from Kent, Washington. And nice. you can understand why he's down. That is great technique from a cornerback. And you, know, you also have to keep number 93 on your radar screen. Feel him moving laterally out towards the sideline. George, all right. 
Ogerson played big in the opener against LSU, made several main turning plays. It's a real bright spot for this offense. And as Sarkeesian told us, uh, one of his big surprises when he came on the scene here in Seattle, all the talent, the skill positions on offense for Washington. Ogerson, a, a safety last year. Ty Willingham uh, got no explanation. Just said, we're moving you to safety. And back to tailback this year. Locker throws it away, and the flag comes out. I mean, he just tossed it to the ground as he jumped out of bounds. Well, he saved that throw, and again, it was Everson Griffin that was tracking him down. He was trying to load up to throw that ball back across the field just as he was about to go out of bounds, and then he saw 93 in his windshield. <laughs> he said, you it. know what, I'm going to save this throw. <laughs> And, and the, the question is whether they're going to call this a fumble. There's also a question as to whether they're going to call grounding. Yeah, on grounding this would be the main question. I mean, because he, he certainly tossed the ball. Uh, I think it was clear that, that he was trying to throw a, a forward pass and let up, and the ball came free. But he's outside the Personal pocket. foul, roughing the passer, number 93 on the defense. 15 yard penalty. Wow. First down. Yeah, so it had nothing to do with the throw. He's outside the pocket and he throws it away. As odd as it looked, that's a legal play. And then he gets hit late in the 15 yard penalty against the Trojans. Yeah, Pete Carroll's not real happy about this call. See, he's saving the throw and then he kind of double pumps the ball. I don't know. That is, that's pretty tough. Now, the, the hit comes out of bounds, but that's really tough for Everson Griffin to hold up. Well, he's still looking to make a play locker. Yeah, and, and Everson Griffin, he can't hold up as long as a uh, forward pass is alive. The possibility of a forward pass is alive for Jake Locker. I don't like the call. Yeah. And right in front of Pete Carroll that was made. So it's first and ten, Washington on the eye they go. Colt gets the call, head for maybe one. That's it. Tough running for the redshirt freshman from Redlands, California. Will Harris, the strong safety in there first. Well, this is a football team for USC that's finished in the top four. Not top five, but the top four seven straight years. You know, not many teams have lined up and, and beaten the Trojans, but if you are going to beat this team, you have to possess the football. And last year, Oregon State did it up Thursday night. A fateful Thursday night, and, and Washington is doing a nice job of, of chewing up some clock and picking up some yards on the ground. As the rain starts to fall now here in Seattle. Pump fake, Locker gets out of the pocket and then goes down. Chased down from behind, so he's got speed. You know he can run, but not enough to get away from Nick Perry. A loss of eight, and just talking to the coaches from Washington, they say, hey, this is the guy, Nick Perry. Don't know why he's not playing more. Yeah, just an inside move. And, and he beats Middleton, the tight end. That is a powerful pass rush thrust there by Perry. It is such a tall task to identify where the pressure is coming from in this Pete Carroll USC defense. It's a zone pressure type scheme. They play safe behind it. They always have a safety deep in the middle of the field to help those corners but the pressure is very tough for an offensive line. Third and 17. Walker walks it up, complete down the near sideline. Jermaine Kirsch with the catch, first down. 30-yard gain. And how about the touch from Walker that time? Well, this is a beautiful throw because he's going to intentionally underthrow this ball to the back shoulder. It's a fade. It's being played perfect by Kevin Thomas. But Kirst gears down. The throw leads him short and towards the sideline. That's a beautiful play between quarterback and wide receiver. And a play where Kevin Thomas essentially had him blanketed. Kirst, the sophomore from Lakewood, Washington. A big catch. Great throw from Walker. And a big pickup on third and long. This is Vicky, the tight end in motion. Walker, straight drop, has a world of time. Throws back to the corner of the end zone. Broken up. And David... He may have been able to run that one in. Well, you could sense it from the crowd. The crowd, you could hear the level go up, the volume go up inside the building. They were all sensing that Jake Locker would pull the football down here. Yeah, he's got some room there. Yeah, that's Everson Griffin, but uh, I put my money on Jake Locker beating Everson Griffin in the open field, and Josh Pinkert 
close to coming up with the interception in the corner of the end zone. He never really took a look. I mean, if he beats Griffin, he gets at least within the five. That's the, the worst he gets. Two Trojans on that side of the field, that's it. Now he looks to run. Hit hard, spins his way inside the 10 to the eight. Kevin Thomas hit him first. Now you have to love the toughness of a Jake Locker. He's a, he's a quarterback in a linebacker's body. And he's not afraid to take on defenders. And look at Thomas. Thomas threw a shoulder at him. And Jake Locker took the contact, wheels to the inside. And he, in my mind right now, and you got a heck of a quarterback in Matt Barkley is, that's on the scene. But I think right now, Jake Locker, you could say he's the best quarterback in the conference. Saw the numbers back in 07. He ran for almost 1,000. Walker out of the gun again with time, flushed out, throws, complete flag on the play, may have been out of bounds first. Devario Middleton, it looked to me like he stepped out first. Well, how about the hit he took at the goal line from Kevin, Kevin Thomas? Looked like he may have stepped out and come back for the ball. Yeah, if he wasn't physically pushed out of bounds by a USC defender. The receiver he becomes an eligible. Went out of bounds on his own. Came back in, was yeah. the first to touch the ball. That's illegal touching. By rule, incomplete pass, fourth down. And that's what it is. Crowd doesn't like it, but it's a good call. Uh, Cavario Middleton, uh, right here, not, he's not going to be forced out. You see right there, he's, he's, his feet are on the sideline. He's clearly out of bounds. He can't come back in and make that catch. And good call by this officiating crew. So Eric Folk, the sophomore from Woodland Hills, California, on for a 28-yard try. Up and good. Tied up at 10 with 4.09 left until halftime. Sarkeesian squad doing it to the Trojans right now. Unique setting here in Seattle. What better way to come to a game, huh? Via boat out on Lake Washington. Pretty picture. You can do that at Neyland Stadium, Tennessee. Come up the river and you can do it here. You have a boat ready for us, sir? No, you know I always do. Yeah, I'll meet you out there. 10-10, Trojans and Huskies. Sarkeesian, Carroll, has been a good one. Stephon Johnson's going to bring this one back. Can't get outside. There's a flag at the 26. So the Trojans have had some penalties, which have cost them. And Nick Holt likes what he sees. During the return, holding a number 14 of the return team. The penalty is 10 yards from the spot of the foul, first down. The third time they've been backed up because of a penalty like that. Reminder, ABC Monday, 8, 7 Central, the biggest dancing with the Stars cast ever assembled. Take center stage, 16 new stars, one epic season. ABC's Dancing with the Stars, the live three-night premiere event. Starts Monday at 8, 7 Central on ABC. Now this is really hard on an offense, starting back up. As you mentioned, Terry, three straight penalties, and... Uh, it really changes Jeremy Bates' options as a play caller. Aaron Court just one of four here in the second quarter. McKnight, nowhere to go. And his defense, this crowd, gaining confidence as we go along. Well, Nick Holt is starting to sense Aaron Corp is struggling. And he's turning up the heat against the run game. He's playing boldly with that defensive front an eight-man front, and he is just daring USC to put the ball in the air with Corp right now. Second and nine. McKnight split out right. On the ground, Havili, uh-uh, not at all. How about during that last time when the defense was on the field. Quinn, how about the conversation on the sideline? Yeah, Aaron Corp sat alongside Jeremy Bates, the quarterback coach. They're both in isolation, and Coach Bates basically went through his entire laminated game card 
almost as if to get a sense of what Aaron Corp was comfortable with. It was almost like they, they went through each play saying yes or no and, and really went, went through that entire laminated game card. Had to have a lot of confidence after that opening drive. Not sure how confident he is right now. Third down out of the gun, throwing incomplete. Mason Foster, another big play. Foster was the guy who forced the fumble, David. Uh, Johnny Morton, the offensive coordinator for USC, really has to be concerned. Uh, the throwing decisions by Aaron Corp, he's picking receivers with defenders draped over their backs. And most of these receivers, especially in the third down situations, they don't have first down depth. You go after O'Malley here. Hadn't been a strength for the Trojans. Their punting game. Line draws short. Bogus is going to watch this one take a great bounce for USC. Look at this. Short punt that's going to roll all the way down to the 28. 53 yards once it settles in. And a reminder, Jimmy Johnson racing for a historic fourth straight championship. Four-time NASCAR champ Jeff Gordon. Regular season points leader Tony Stewart looking to make history of their own. Chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup at New Hampshire. Kicking off tomorrow. 1 o'clock Eastern on ABC. What do you think? You're a big NASCAR fan. I'm a big Tony Stewart fan. And uh, what a year he's had. First year, ownership of his own team. And I'd really like to see that. That'd be a great story if Tony Stewart was able to win the chase. How about the vets? How about the Mark Mark talking up to the old guys? Huh? 50 years old. He'd be the first. Walker under center. Hands it off to Colt. Spins away from one. Game one, maybe two. That's it. Remember, Washington has burned all three of their timeouts as we approach the two-minute mark here. We hear a lot of talk from people this week. Can Washington stay in the game? Do they even have a chance to win? And a lot of people forget two years ago, 97, up here in Seattle, 27-24 game. And a lot of the same kids that played in that football game are on the field today. And I think they're feeding off of some of that confidence. Played them to a six-point game in 2006 as well. Aguilar in motion. They're going to keep it on the ground, though, and Chris Gallipo says, uh-uh, not at me. You're going the other way. Gallipo, the guy who had the big interception return to set up a touchdown last week. Uh, Chris Gallipo, for him, it's been a long time coming. Very highly recruited. Had several back procedures have kept him out of the lineup. All these linebackers are ha have had to wait their turns because of the great players that have lined up in front of them, but Gallipo... He lit it up against Ohio State. You mentioned the big play last week, Terry. Now, USC called the timeout with a minute 35, and it, you mentioned waiting their turn. It's one of the remarkable things, I think, about Pete Carroll and what he's been able to do. In an age with the scholarship limits and that word parity, where kids can go play on TV anywhere they go, it's not like the old days when you had five or six programs that could stockpile. Pete has been able to do that. They go two, maybe three deep with talent that nobody else has. Well, I think it's the message that he uses when he walks into the living rooms of 17-year-olds and their parents. You know, he looks them in the eye and says, hey, uh, if you're good enough, you're going to play. Uh, if, you're, if you're the best player at your position, you're going to play at USC the day you walk on, on campus. And he creates that type of competition. He also tells those recruits in the same breath, if you're not that type of guy, we really don't want you right. at USC. And, it, and he, it's a kind of a challenge, but the kids respond very well, and, and he is creative. And it, 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 it's equal to a dynasty in the Pac-10. Be careful here. Walker on third and nine. Going to throw. Aguilar comes out, makes a nice catch across the 30. His second of the afternoon. Will Harris on the coverage, but well shy of a first down. Reminder, Cooper Tires halftime report. Coming up next, a minute 29 of game time. And it's been a good one here. Fourth and six now as USC calls their last time out, and they're going to get the ball back. Uh, this is very reminiscent of the situation late last week. Ohio State, you know, Ohio State had a third and three with about a minute to go. Out near midfield, USC had no timeouts left, and Ohio State decided to throw the football. And on an incomplete pass, 
They stopped the clock for USC. USC was able to come down the field, tie the game at 10. I thought that was a very key point. And USC using their timeouts well here to get the ball back in the hands of their offense. I know that Pete Carroll's hoping that the, the field position is going to be a little bit better on this trip. Damian Williams awaiting the punt from Will Mahan. Had a good one last time of over 50 yards, and there's Williams back at his own 24. No pressure. Williams the fair catch at the 30. So the Trojans out of timeouts, but a minute 22 left to try to get something else on the board. And Aaron Corp will go back to work. First two drives. 10 points, 148 yards. Look at the last three. I, I, I think that it's pretty safe to say that Corp looked most comfortable on those opening two passes. Remember, they started their scoring drive, their only touchdown scoring drive with two straight completed passes from Corp, and he struggled ever since. So Corp out of the gun with a minute 22 to work with. Plenty of time. He can run with it if he wants. Slides out at the 36. So a gain of maybe five. Clock continues to run. And they scramble back up. As we hit the minute mark. Here comes the pressure. Under pressure. Complete across midfield. Havili with a catch and a big gain all the way down to the 37-yard line. They brought the blitz, and Aaron Court made him pay. And they split Havili out in the slot. They split him out wide. How many fullbacks can get out in space and make those kinds of plays? Stanley's going to run it this time. Down to the 27, so you're just shy of a first down. Good block from Alex Parsons on the right side, Spring and Havili. Uh, USC working quickly, getting up to the line of scrimmage. Nice work. The clock status. Second and one to the near sideline. Dropped. Would have been a tough catch for David Osbury. Okay, so you have 18 seconds here. No timeouts. Third and one. And you stop the clock with the first down. I think you go to your bread and butter as we watch Corp and Corp smoother with his feet on this drive an accurate throw the third and one here I think you run the football you count on that offensive line picking up the first down you stop the clock and then you get right back up to the line of scrimmage Williams in motion they keep it on the ground and Vili's going to get dumped for a loss back at the 32 and that's going to be the end of the first half you figure you can pick up the first down behind the offensive line and the eight-man front responds donald butler with a huge play right before the break and they're going to scramble to try to get the field goal team on they whistle it dead Uh, -uh. it's not going to work that'll do it so the trojans not able to get points on the board with that final drive right before the break and look at the huskies headed to the locker room Coach, what do you have coach how do you uh, best characterize the play of aaron corp well first off this is the pack 10 you can see here it is tough game on the road it's always hard Aaron's, he's working it right now he's getting this field uh, we're being pretty pretty safe with them right now. We probably need to open up a little bit, but really we, we want to get back to the running game that helped us so much in the first quarter. Thanks, Coach. Zone. Pearl Jam bringing us back here. Husky Stadium, they're starting to believe those in purple right now. Tied up 10-10. Aaron Court running the show for USC. And uh, Terry Gannon back with David Norrie and Quinn Kesnick down on the field. You know, USC fans have seen this movie before. Last year, they beat Ohio State. They go on the road. They lose to Oregon State. 
It's 10-10. How are the Huskies getting it done? Well, I think they've done a great job keeping this crowd in the football game, and the noise is always a factor here, and it was a factor in the first half. The Huskies would like to keep it that way into the second half, and I think they've taken the run game away from USC, especially there in the second quarter. They put this game squarely in the lap of Aaron Corp. Jake Locker's starting to believe, too. He's heating up here. It's uh, the second quarter, really, the momentum all on the side of Washington. We check out a Pacific Life game summary. Aaron Cork, the start from Mac Barkley, who is injured. Great opening drive, very good first quarter, but the second hasn't matched it. Well, Cork looked great on the opening drive. He really did. And, and on that last drive, you know, to end the first half, he regained some of that sharpness. He hit the big ball down the middle of the field to Stanley Havili. And the Trojans are going to want to see some more of that from Corp here in the second half. With Richardson back deep from his own two. Across the 20 out to the 23. Quint, what do you have down in the field? Well, I spoke to Steve Sarkeesian uh, at halftime when he came out. I asked him what changed at 10 nothing. He said initially they were too excited, trying too hard uh, on offense, flying around a little, little too much on defense. He said the key adjustments were made in this ball game on the defensive line, both in terms of personnel. They've made some flip-flops and schematically on that defensive line. He said that really made a difference in the second quarter. Well, you talk about adjustments. It's safe to say, I think, that uh, no two staffs will know each other better than these two. You know all about Steve Sarkeesian taking over here after being the offensive coordinator for Pete Carroll. Nick Holt, the defensive coordinator for Washington, was at USC as well. A number of assistants. First down pass right through the hands of Devin Aguilar. Now we saw the numbers on Jake Locker in the first half. 7 of 11. You know, not big numbers, just over 100 yards. But you know, the Huskies have to be most impressed with his ability to, to keep the play field clean to not make turnovers. One of the big plays in the LSU game, the opener, an eight point win by the Tigers was an interception that went the other way in the first half. Second and 10 for Locker, under center this time. Play action on the run, does this very well. Reverses, looking for a seam somewhere. Gets a block, springs it to the outside. There is Jake Locker at his best. I mean, he may have run 50 yards on that play side to side. Well, Jake Locker was a hugely recruited quarterback in the state of Washington three years ago, a small town up near the Canadian border. And he's become legendary for his ability to turn something positive or turn something positive into you know from a negative play he, he's just done such a great job with his feet up here in seattle and he's such a fan favorite and he did it he ran about 60 yards to game four so it's third and six they're going to whistle this one dead prior to the snap false start number 61 on the offense Five-yard penalty, third down. It's got to be third and 11. Locker, dual sport guy, not only a dual threat on the football field, but drafted in the 10th round by the Angels and actually has signed and not going to play right away, obviously. The football is his priority, but with that signing bonus, he's able to pay his tuition and he gives Steve Sarkeesian an extra scholarship. You don't have to watch him long to realize just how talented he is athletically. Trojans coming. Here they come. They set up the screen. Locker throws it away. Screenplay worked well for them in that uh, opening game against LSU. Well, they had the screen set up there wide to Polk. And not a very good throw from Jake Locker. If Jake Locker is able to feed that ball outside. I think Polk walks for the first down. So it's fourth and 11. And Mahan, who's had a good game, comes on. Hunted away to Damian Williams. This one shorter than his other one. And in fact, well, the Trojans will have great field position out near midfield. A punt of just 29 yards for Mahan. A reminder, fans. Whether you're living in the Boston area or 
Your heart just never left that city. Log on to ESPNBoston.com for local coverage of the Celtics, Red Sox, Bruins, Patriots, all the areas, college sports as well. ESPNBoston.com. We've got ESPNChicago.com coming soon. Dallas, New York, and L.A. Spreading like wildfire. So first and ten Trojans near midfield. Joe McKnight, the tailback. Aaron Court under center. He started the game from Matt Barkley. He's got the shoulder injury. McKnight tweaked an ankle on a return earlier, but he's been back in and been fine. A gain of about three. Well, you know at halftime in the locker room for USC, Pete Carroll, I wouldn't be surprised. He's a defensive coach, but I wouldn't be surprised if he got in front of his offensive line and challenged them a bit to reestablish the line of scrimmage, to start playing like they did early in the first quarter. The run game has slipped away from the Trojans as we gotten deeper into this football game. Couldn't pick up the first down right before the half and had to scramble on and didn't have enough time to get the field goal unit on. Court, nowhere to run. And to the outside he goes. There's a flag back in the backfield as he scrambles and maybe picks up the first down, but we'll see what the penalty mark is all about. Uh, looks like it's going against the Trojans. Uh, and finally, Aaron Corp showing his calling card. Holding on number 61 in the offense. 10 yard penalty, previous spot. Second down. Christopher O'Dowd, who missed the first game with a shoulder injury, and Jeff Byers took over at that center spot, but he came back last week. Myers moved over, but he's one of their best. Yeah, and even though O'Dowd got hit with that penalty, we saw an all Pac-10 defensive end, Daniel Teo Nesham, come free right in the face of Corp on the bootleg. Corp slipped it to the outside, big gainer, and I, I think you know, you'd, you'd like to see some more of that from this young quarterback. Second and 17. We're going to whistle it dead. Mason Foster is right in the face of Aaron Court. Foster had a huge first half. Well, looks like it's going to be a procedure call against the Trojans. And again, the noise, a factor. Pete Carroll knows Husky Stadium well. Well, and let's understand this. I mean, last week they were at the horseshoe. It's, it's not louder than it was there. But Barkley was the quarterback. He handled it very well on that last drive, and he gets a win. This is a guy getting his first start, and it does get extremely loud here. Well, and, and it's also human nature. You feel like you can play that type of game back at the shoe, that it's, you're going to be able to handle it. And Husky Stadium, I think this week has been a, a bit of a shock to the system for the Trojans. Williams in motion to the far side. Court looking for him. Now throws in the flat. Havili, who had a big first half across the 40, but well covered. Good pursuit by that Washington defense. And Stanley Havili, after his second catch of the day, is down. And he is one of the most unsung and valuable members of this USC team over the last three years. Truly the best in my mind the best receiving fullback in college football nice job against Trufant breaking the tackle as the ball arrives and tough to tell from that angle mm, look like what happened to number 31 maybe a helmet to helmet EJ Savannah the outside linebacker came up late they've got this bell wrong coming off that victory a week ago against Ohio State. You remember last year against the Buckeyes at the Coliseum? The, the catch that Havili made down the sideline that, that, that launched the Trojans to a big first half lead? And of course, the Washington staff knows all about Stanley Havili, what he can bring, and then the rest of the Trojans. Nick Holt, you know, that, this was a scene earlier. Nick Holt on the sideline with Joe McKnight said, hey, Great to see you. Uh, we saw that throughout warm-ups today. Uh, it took Nick Holt about two counts to get refocused on the game. <laughs> oh, he's got that game face on on Thursday, I think. Third and long. Here comes the crowd again. Swing pass. McKnight. Oh, what a sidestep. Shy of a first down, and there is yet another penalty marker down. Ah, uh, but that's a little bit more like it for Aaron Corp. You know, get the ball out safely to some of your skilled playmakers. 
That's a nice throw on the swing pass in time. Sideline interference on the defense. That's a five yard penalty from the dead ball spot. First down. Wow. And that is big. Well, and, and I'm not real fond of sideline warning calls. You know, it used to be you get a number of warnings. Now watch the play after the catch by Joe McKnight. Uh, is he electric in the open field? You know, the kids get excited. The coaches get excited on the sideline. I, I think that was the rule committee getting bored on a, you know, on a lunch break a couple years ago when they instituted <laughs> that sideline penalty. Safety issue, I'm, I'm sure, but duly noted, Mr. North. First down, McKnight dropped the football. It's loose. Looked like the Trojans may have gotten there late. Boy, it was loose a couple of times. Did Charles Brown come up with it? I think it was Charles Brown, and he's known for his quickness, his quick feet. Prototype NFL tackle, but it was just quickness covering the football that saved the Trojans on this play. That eight-man front continuing to swarm for the Huskies. The Trojans very lucky to keep the football. And Vanzel McDowell, the cornerback, going after that football with a purpose. Second and ten. McKnight can't find it one way, comes this way. He's got a first down. The quickness of McKnight to read it, get hit, bounce outside, and pick up a first down. Gain of 13. Mason Foster eventually ran him out. Look at all the Huskies up on the line of scrimmage. Now they're going to bottle him up inside, and they're going to rally to the football, but if you don't wrap him, Joe McKnight has the speed to get to the perimeter, and he was just a step from walking down the sideline. Foster, the first guy to hit him. Nate Williams finally pushed him out, but it's first and 10 at the 25. Avili leading Stephon Johnson. He's got a hole and a big gain inside the 15, down to the 14 as we get a report right now from New York and Matt Weiner. All right, Terry, time for an AT&T All-American Player of the Week update. Kyle's job at best figures to climb up to Heisman charts after 131 yards and a career-best five touchdowns in the road win at Minnesota. Text vote to 345-345 on your mobile phone and cast your vote. Matt, thank that, that, that first one, a job at best, textbook best. He has one or two of those every game. Clearly now in the Heisman race. Avili with flags coming out behind him. Brought to the turf. Daniel Teo Neshem in there first. And the Trojans down on the sideline. Looked like McKnight again. Holding on the offense, number 71. That's going to be a holding call against the Trojans and we'll march them back 10 yards. But well, they have seven penalties for 67 yards now. Again, this is a big left tackle, Charles Brown. They go ahead and freeze it right there. And then McKnight. Oh, he gets rolled up by Havili. Yeah. And that same ankle. And it's really tough when you're fighting a flu bug, bug the entire week. You don't practice. Now, he didn't even participate in the walkthrough yesterday, and it's tough physically to come out and go on a on a Saturday, and then you get your big fullback rolling up underneath him. So it'll be first and 20 Trojans. They continue to work on Joe McKnight. We'll step aside. Now the Space Needle here, downtown Seattle, gorgeous view. Been a great day. No surprise there. Some came out a little bit, but seventh play of the drive now. For the Trojans, Alan Bradford in at tailback on first and 20. Corp, who seems to have settled down over the middle, has got his man complete inside the 15th down to the 13. Anthony McCoy, the tight end. How about Corp now on this drive? Well, he's, he's starting to get some easier throws. Uh, Jeremy Bates has done a nice job play calling to get him some confidence with the easier throws. And... About time that Anthony McCoy steps into the picture. He's one of the most potent tight ends in football. And Corp was up. 
being worked on on the sideline. Stephon Johnson fights his way down to the 12. Got to get to about the five for a first down. Clock continues to run. Yeah, and offense is just because they're facing an eight-man front. They can't give up the run game. And how do you beat an eight-man front? Well, occasionally you have the quarterback run the ball. Yeah. Option plays. You plan runs for the quarterback. But sometimes you just run the ball with the tailback and count on him making the eight-man miss. Well, and as you mentioned, they don't have their deep threat, Ronald Johnson. Not that it comes into play at this situation. But overall, you don't have that to keep the defense honest. Thorpe throws under pressure. Havili slips outside the 15. The ball comes loose late. We'll see if they whistle it dead first. Yeah, and he might have been down there. No, Washington football. What a big, big play. That well, was a great play by the middle linebacker, Donald Butler. Watch him rally to the football. It's a matter of what, did he go down here? Is the knee down? No, it's not. And it looked like he had lost his footing with the naked eye there. Boy, I think that play is going to stand. The knee never hit. He's still up there as he loses it there. Butler right with him. Eventually, Nate Williams, the man who came up with the football. So they'll take a closer look. 8.51 left in the third. Tied up 10-10. Back at Husky Stadium, Washington and USC. Tied up at 10. 8.51 left in the third. Take another look at that last play. Havili's knee never hits, David. And I think that ball was coming out. It was ruled that the ball was coming out before he touched his arm to the ground. And it's confirmed by the replay boot. Chris Polk, nice little move on first and ten. Will Harris, the strong safety on the stop. I mean, this is a game. And you USC. keep letting Washington hang around and hang around. USC loses another chance for a go-ahead field goal. And, you know, the, the clock ran out there at the end of the first half. Jonathan Condon, the... New field goal kicker for the USC Trojans is not known for his leg. Second and four after the gain of six. Hope the call again ahead for maybe two. The Scalippo on the stop. Yeah, that play call just before the end of the half. I thought it was a right call by Jeremy Bates because Condon's going to have to line up and, and try a 49 yard field goal. Condon chunked one and hit the crossbar against Ohio State from 44 yards last week. Well, Pete chose right before the half to run the ball. He needed about two yards. And there was 12 seconds left. You knew you couldn't get another play off if you didn't pick it up. You feel with that offensive line like you're going to do it. Absolutely. You figure your offensive line, and I thought it was closer to a third and one there. You've got to figure your offensive line is going to pick up the first down for you, and the clock stops. Third and three. Wow, he brought it back in, Rocker did. He's got James Johnson, who makes the move to the outside and has a first down. How about Walker reloading? Third catch of the day for Johnson. Now, Locker's shown this ability a couple times today. Look at that. He, he reacts oh. to that. Oh. Secondary member for USC flashing in his face. Saves the throw and reloads. That's the type of quarterback that Steve hey. Sarkeesian has. David, you talk about athletic ability. People talk about Tiger Woods stopping his screen when the camera goes. And how the heck can he do it? I mean, that's similar. It's very similar, and, and it just gives you an idea of his talents as a quarterback. Hope, hit, falls ahead for a yard or so. Malcolm Smith in on the stop. He and Chris Gallipo, Michael Morgan making up that linebacker court. Well, you just get a feel when a team is in a tight game with the Trojans that they're at times holding on. They're trying to piece together first downs, and that's a big part of it. You know, you, the longer you can keep the Trojan offense off the field, the longer that you can chew up yards on the ground and, and continue these drives and, and Locker doing a real nice job of managing this game. Three receivers set, they spread them out. Low snap off the ground. And shortstop picking that one up. Complete over the middle. Locker still able to get the completion to Cavario Middleton. The tight end who's going to be a good one. Great All-American. Locker's going to get the ball rolled back to him and, and a, a nice job of, of 
making the play cleanly, and then has the ability to find Middleton, his tight end, immediately, training his eyes down the middle of the field in a very accurate throw. Got a big third down coming up. They're getting a sense, though, since that first quarter of why Pete Carroll thinks this guy's more dangerous than what they faced last week at Ohio State. Middleton incomplete, can't hang up. That's a tough one to catch there. Will Harris with a chance at a big play. I remember last year, Jake Locker missed the last eight games of the season. A broken bone up in his wrist and thumb area. You see him favoring that area, his throwing hand. This is a physical unit that this uh, Husky offense is lining up against. Mahan, a high short punt. Williams not going to get a chance to bring this one back. And the Huskies fans not happy with that effort. 529 left in the third. You know, Mr. Nori, uh, you did a pretty good job. There's some nice places in the Pac-10. Oh, you're kidding me. Seattle and Berkeley a couple of weeks ago will be in Eugene for Cal and Oregon next week. Cal a big win today. First and ten. Keep it on the ground. Havili around a couple. Cross midfield close to a first down. Stanley Havili doing a little bit of everything for the Trojans. Now, USC usually is trying to find a tailback that's hot. Now, they have so many young talents to choose from. I think the staff has decided that Havili you know, with the exception of that fumble on the last drive on the third down play, Habili is the back with the hot hand, and they've been feeding the ball to him throughout this game. And you saw McKnight was in on that play, so the ankle's okay. Joe goes to the sideline, and Stephon Johnson, who's the tailback. As they operate out of the eye, and they did pick up the first down. Johnson slips by one. And Mason Foster, who's had a big game. An outside linebacker was the first guy to hit him. EJ Savannah also there. You think about the Pac-10. And this is the, the Pac-10 opener for both Washington and USC. What Pete Carroll has been able to do at USC over the last seven years. Unprecedented. It's unbelievable. And at seven consecutive Pac-10 titles. Seven straight top four finishes in the AP poll. The first team to ever win three straight Rose Bowls. And they did that last year against Penn State. On to four straight. Corp throws deep over the middle. Contact. There's the flag. Yep. No question about it. Desmond Trufant trying to stay with Damian Williams. Well, this isn't a bad play by a true freshman. And a pretty nice throw from Corp. It's going to be a 15-yard penalty on pass interference. Pass interference on the defense, number six. It's a 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Well, you see Sarkeesian saying, hey, that ball was tipped. And if it was tipped, obviously it's not a penalty. Let's take a look on the ISO first. Damian Williams, such a tough wide receiver to handle. Trefont, not a bad play. You don't want to give up a touchdown here. It's a good call. I did not see a deflection. I think that's a pretty good call by the crew. Tough to tell. And Trufant did arrive early. And that's hard to tell. It was the accuracy on the ball by Cork that set up the penalty. Now they're going to take a closer look now. Another review. I did not see a deflection from that angle, from that look. And and we can take a couple more looks. So Keeshan was right there, and they reacted immediately. Uh, Brad, see. Bradford chipping outside. Wow, that got right in between <laughs> the arms of Foster. I mean, if he didn't tip it, how did he not? I mean, he split the wickets on this throw. <laughs> How did he fit the ball through that window? See if we can pick up a change in the rotation on the football. 
I don't think so. I mean, that ball was delivered with some authority on the skinny post route to Damian Williams, and he put that ball right on a spot to Williams. Well, and I'm not trying to read minds, but Foster didn't react as if he had tipped it, and we even caught him late having seen the flag thrown back there. So whatever that means. And Sarkeesian, you have to be so impressed. He's, he's a very sharp, he's always on the ball as a game coach. And, and I think that's one of the major strengths that this Washington program is getting from Steve Sarkeesian. He's got a great feel for decision making during a game. And to contest that play and to, to vocally let the officiating crew know that there was a question. I, I like After further review, it could not be determined whether or not the ball was tipped at the line of scrimmage. Therefore, the ruling on the field stands. First down. And I got to be, I, I couldn't tell. Oh, there was not any video evidence from any of those angles that would clearly lead you to believe that the ball was deflected. See, he just, he reacts right away. So you know he definitely believes it in that moment, but it's got to be uh, irrefutable evidence. Uh, I mean, Indisputable. And, and you take another look at that, I can't see it. I, I would have contested it as well. I still can't believe Cork got that ball through Foster. First and ten. Play action. Cork throws off his back foot. He's got Havili, his favorite target today. He fights his way down to the 22, the fourth catch of the afternoon. Quentin Richardson on the hit. Now keep in mind that Corp was the starter going into fall camp, and how about a taste of his athleticism? Retreating, two defenders, and just slinging that ball outside to his fullback. That is a nice play to keep this drive alive. Stephon Johnson in at tailback on second and two. Port throws double coverage intercepted. He threw it right to it. Donald Butler with the pick. As big a play as Butler has made in his career, maybe, stopping the drive. Now this is Donald Butler, the middle linebacker. He's gonna drop, he's taught to read the eyes, walls off the inside receiver. And as a quarterback at this level, you're taught to get off of covered receivers, Terry. That time, both Mason Foster and Donald Butler, the interceptor, there was not enough room to fit that ball in. The interception gives Washington the ball at the 23. Chris Polk bounces off of one. Still up. Carries tacklers for a first down. Starting to believe in Seattle. 12 last year 15 game losing streak they stopped that last week against Idaho and here they are tied up with the number three team in the nation and the wasted trips are starting to pile up for the Trojans first down out of the eye Hope again carrying a lot today and then again carrying people out near the 40 as we get an update from Matt Weiner all right, Terry, Rocky Top may not be on the agenda tonight in Knoxville, Florida. Gaining a little separation on Tennessee. Jeffrey Dents with the touchdown there. Now it's 23-6 lead. And the nation's longest win streak is in jeopardy. Utah trails at Oregon 28-10 midway through the third. And so Oregon 28-10 in what would be a huge win. And Cal with a big one against Minnesota. They meet next week. Second and five. As Locker changes the play. Play clock down to three. Locker looks one way, throws the other. Incomplete. Aguilar, the intended. Nice hey, think job. about 
Aaron Corp and what he's been through here today. Well, and this is one of the great qualities of Jeremy Bates. He's over there. He's sitting down with his young quarterback, a good quarterbacks coach. And even though he isn't the offensive coordinator, he is a play caller. He's a calming influence on a young quarterback getting his first start in an extremely difficult environment. And I know he's working with him. He's trying to keep Corp in this game and keep him settled. A lot of football left. They split the backs. Polk Ferguson from the gun. Locker throws it to Chris Polk at midfield. First and ten Huskies. Getting the football to Chris Polk, who grew up in Southern California, was recruited by the Trojans, committed to USC, and changed his mind to come up here to Seattle. Boy, you can see Sarkeesian's coaching and Jake Locker's feet. He is becoming a pocket passer. That was one of the big challenges for Coach Sark coming into this program, and Jake Locker starting to look like a guy who's comfortable in the pocket. Locker. Hope gain of about three. Luther Brown on the stop. Everson Griffin applied the pressure on Locker. It's so hard to identify the pressure from this USC defense because of the zone uh, blitz package that Pete Carroll uses week in and week out. But I think you know Washington's offensive front has done a nice job picking up blitzers. Uh, this offensive line, especially the big center Tolar working with the quarterback locker they've been able to identify and pick up that pressure but if anybody's going to have a sense of what that defense is going to do it might be Sarkeesian Johnson the drop would have had a first down under pressure though that is a big drop right there by the true freshman uh, Jake Locker you know he had nice recognition before the snap of the football he puts the ball outside in great shape for his young wide receiver. You can't have drops like that if you have visions of knocking off a top five team. So another big third down coming up. Locker's been terrific picking those up on this drive. Four of nine for the Huskies. Focusing in the backfield. Here come the Trojans on the blitz and they picked it up and it was right behind the intended receiver. Well, they had a chance with Jordan Polk to break one big time. And the punting team will come out. Uh, Jake Locker, he's a competitor, and he's looking at the sideline as if Steve Sarkeesian might go for it on fourth down. Not a chance. You know, we talked to Sarkeesian about that, too. He said, you know, as an offensive coordinator, I always kind of want to go. Now that I'm a head coach, it's a bit different. That's a great way to have a short career to start going fourth and six and <laughs> ten, ten games against USC. Mahan on. The last one wasn't even 30 yards. They keep this one low. Williams lost it initially, and Damian gets it back. Dumped right there at the 15. Brandon Huper on the stop. This is one of the most difficult jobs for a student athlete playing college football a punt returner making decisions on balls that he's going to make plays on and Williams a nice play to regain composure well USC number three Texas number two getting set tonight eight o'clock Eastern five Pacific to take on the Red Raiders of Texas Tech who are you liking that one David Texas or Texas Tech I like Texas and how can you not I mean they've dominated that series down in Austin McKnight, tough running. Out to the 17. And Mason Foster, the outside linebacker, yet another tackle. He has been active throughout. We're heading to the fourth, and we're still tied at 10. Listen to this crowd. A year ago, the Washington defense was one of the worst in America. Not today, David. Well, Nick Holt told us about his linebackers. And watch the middle linebacker, Donald Butler, make the play. He's going to take on Red Ellison, number 40. 
and gets off the block and makes a great play on the sideline. First and 10 from the 39. Quick throw to the sideline. James Johnson with another catch. The true freshman is going to have a great career here in Seattle. Well, he has grown up in a hurry, and, and he did have a big drop on that last drive. This time, makes a catch with the hands. He sure doesn't look like a true freshman. I mean, here's a guy who originally was growing up in Inglewood, tough neighborhood, sent away to live with his brother, one of 14 kids, the youngest of 14, and now in, on the major college level. Hope the carry right about to that first down marker. Yeah, he picked it up. This is going to be a first down. They'll move the chain. And Johnson, going back to Johnson, I, I don't see many wide receivers coming out of high school. You know, three, four months out of the lunch line with the route running capability that Johnson has. Six catches in that LSU game. And a touchdown on his first catch, by the way, of his career. He's got four this afternoon. Set up the screen. Good win. Got a blocker. And a first down. Hit hard at the 39, but DeAndre Goodwin, the junior from Pacoima, California, a big game. Now, this is a great play by Osai, the left tackle. Watch him get outside. The locker does a great job of drawing the pass rush to him, selling the pass. Very accurate throw, and then Osai gets the block outside. Creates a nice crease for Goodwin. Goodwin, their leading receiver a year ago, but a slow start to this season. Came back strong against Idaho last week, though. Some congratulations on the sideline. First and 10 from the 39 of USC now. Walker throws back this way. Got his tight end. Cross the 30, Middleton, and a first down. Quick reminder, you got it. AFC playoff teams from a year ago. On ESPN's Monday Night Football, Peyton Manning leading the way for the Colts. Trying to hit their stride in their first season under Jim Caldwell. Chad Pennington and the Dolphins. So, Monday Night Countdown kicking it off. Served by Applebee's at 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific. Colts and the Dolphins. How about this drive? The poise of Locker now. Wearing down the defense of the Trojans. Uh, he's doing a terrific job. A dangerous throw on that last play, but he got away with it. Jake pump fakes, throws, tipped up. He bats it down, and his offensive lineman comes down with the catch. That was a 6-4-3 double play, David. Is that how they scored it? Yeah. <laughs> if you're scoring at home. Well, on the prior play, on the prior play, Locker gets away with the ball fitted in out in, outside of Galippo. Inside linebacker for USC. <laughs> and here he gets the ball deflected. And watch. I mean, he goes up. That is a tremendously heady play to get up in the air and try to swat that ball to the ground. And give you a little idea of his jumping ability. Get up a little. <laughs> Second and 11. Pump fake going deep near sideline. Aguilar stretches out and can't get there. Devin Aguilar had a step. Pretty good coverage, actually. Pinkard was right there with him. Now, Pinkard is such a great performer in the secondary for USC. He's been a starter as a cornerback. He's played a lot of safety. And I think he is truly one of the premier corners in the country. Regardless of where you play him, he is a dominant performer. And Aguilar, that was a pretty good throw. The coverage by Pinkard was a difference. Yeah, Pinkard originally was going to be inside at safety, and Therese Wright is out. So he's out at corner. Third and 11. Three receivers, they split the backs again. A ground ball back to Walker. He picks it up, throws, and is on target. Complete. He's got another first down. James Johnson's fifth catch of the game. 
Watch the play the locker makes on it. This isn't football. This is lawn bowling. And much like Jake <laughs> Locker makes the play, gets his feet together, gathers himself, and how about that ball outside to Johnson? With Kevin Thomas hanging all over the true freshman. You think you need an arm to make that play? He is truly impressive. So it's first down at the 17 now. Play action, Locker under pressure. That's a dangerous one. Holt out of the backfield, Chris Gallipo broke that up. Now that was one of the rare throwing decision mistakes we've seen from Jake Locker, and that could have cost him seven points the other way. Gallipo's a highly talented middle linebacker, very good in pass coverage, a pressure. Who else but Jarrell Casey, number 91, getting into the legs of Locker, and Locker's got to save that throw or throw it away. Casey went right around Senio Calamete. So it's second down. Nobody back there with Locker. Under pressure again. Flag on the play, incomplete. Got to be a hold. Yeah, I think it is going to be a hold. And, and for the Huskies, they had a lot of possibilities if the whole hold was not called and you know, Locker got outside, he could have done some things with his feet and Holding missed an open receiver. On the offense, number 61, 10 yard penalty, previous spot, second down. You beat like that quickly. You know, your first reaction may be to hold, but Locker's got the speed to get out of the pocket. You don't have to. You know, these offensive linemen for Washington, they're facing monster assignments. You got guys like Everson Griffin and Jarrell Casey and Christian Tupo. Casey so reminiscent of Cedric Ellis, and I think Everson Griffin reminds people a lot of Lawrence Jackson, a couple All-Americans at USC. A penalty. Washington today inside gear. Not much going on at all. Michael Morgan read it perfectly and sent Polk back. Well, right now the play calling challenge becomes not necessarily picking up a first down and it came into play on that on that second down call there Terry. Steve Sarkeesian's thinking three points here. He's not thinking touchdown and he's trying to figure out a way that he can get his field goal kicker just a, a few yards closer to the SC goal line set up a reasonable attempt he's thinking don't give up points the other way and he's thinking don't give up yards the other way you remember what happened to Terrell Pryor last yep. week five point lead he takes the sack and it probably costs Ohio State the game tenth play of the drive coming up and Locker wants to talk to his head coach the 35 year old from Torrance California Steve Sarkeesian having a conversation Race guys, little missed here in Seattle. Husky Stadium. It's been loud throughout. 10:08 left in the fourth, and we are deadlocked at 10. Number three, USC. Their season on the line. Remember that game after Ohio State last year, cost them a shot at a national title. Third and 21. Locker going to the end zone through the hands of Hope. Malcolm Smith, the linebacker, right there with him. This is an outside linebacker getting great depth. Uh, the outside linebacker getting out underneath a fade route in the end zone. The speed of this linebacking group from USC really apparent all over the field. Eric Folk, 37. That's his longest. This one's a 46 yarder to go up three. left it's Washington with a three-point lead over the number three Trojans talking to him this week I got the sense I don't know about you that he was cautiously confident he felt good about his team but he knew what he was up against well he, and he needed some help the USC has had no less than four scoring drives and without points turnovers they needed USC to handle the ball sloppy at times he's gotten that and look at this team he's leading the hop got the headset knocked off 
And what he's done by taking a lead is he has put the game in the hands of Aaron Cork. And that was the game plan. That was the game plan for Steve Sarkeesian. It was certainly the game plan for his defensive coordinator, Nick Holt. Will it be Aaron Cork who leads the offense? When the Trojans go back out now. I think it would be very tough to put Mitch Mustaine in in this situation. To get his first snap to quarterback since he started those eight games down at Arkansas. He was 8-0 as a starter back in 06, but it has been a long time. McKnight from his own goal line. Joe brings it back out to the 24 as we check in with Matt Weiner. All right, Terry, Sports Center right now presented by Sprint. And until a few minutes ago, it looked like the nation's longest win streak would end at Oregon. But Utah gets quick points, including this Robert Johnson fumble return. 14 points in 17 seconds, and Utah is back within four against Oregon. Not over yet, nor is this one. The old stadium's shaking right now. Aaron Court indeed running the offense. Under center. Straight drop, throws over the middle, under throws. Anthony McCoy is tied in. How about Court coming back out now? It, it took one great drive last week by Barkley to win it. How about now? Well, that's a bad ball from Court. He has McCoy running clean up the seam, up the middle of the field. And he just underthrows this ball. I mean, he short arms this ball. And if he puts that with a little top on it, a little trajectory and fits it in, McCoy's got his defender beat by a couple steps and he's got a lot of green in front of him. McKnight looks outside, bounces outside, drill. Out of bounds, Mason Foster, the outside linebacker on the stop. Brings up third and seven as we check out our city inside view. The last seven possessions for the Trojans, nothing on the board, three turnovers. Remember, they came in overall with just three turnovers. Yeah, that graphic, it looks, it looks a lot like the blueprint for an upset. True freshman. Got a football in his hands over on the sidelines watching. Court throws, batted down. Guess who? Foster again. Well, Corp was trying to find Osbury on a curl route and great depth by Foster getting out underneath the route. This defense has responded in the second half. Jory Fogerson back at his own 38, awaiting the punt. And they kick it away from him. And it'll run a bounce just about the 37, a punt of 35 yards. Corp trying to get it together. Colts defense already has it together. They take over with 8.43 left. What an upset this would be. So what about that friendship? Will it be tested uh, if Sarkeesian's club hangs on here? Yeah, I, I think it's safe to say. <laughs> First and 10, Locker and the Huskies take over at the 37. They'll keep it on the ground with Polk. How conservative, conservative do you get now? with that offense if you're Sarkeesian. Well, Jake Locker is a three-year starter. I think you can trust him in his decision-making. He made a couple mistakes in the opener against LSU, but you know what, what strikes me here, Terry, is I'm starting to get the feel that the defense for USC is gonna have to make a play. They're gonna have to create something in terms of a turnover, a big play, because the offense right now, I'm not sure if you're Pete Carroll, you have the confidence with Aaron Corp today that you had with Matt Barkley last Saturday night. I'm pretty sure that you don't, based on what we've seen today. Second and 10, Locker again gonna change the play. And there's movement on the left side. So the, the play clock was running down at 
almost out. Movement on the left side. Prior to the snap, delay a game on the offense, five yard penalty, second down. Okay, take your pick. Let's delay a game. You know, Locker was trying to check out of a play there. He might have been trying to check his pass protection, depending on what the play call was. No tougher task in college football than trying to piece together some first downs against probably the best defensive unit in football at this level. Locker has to be very safe with the football in his end. Here come the Trojans on the blitz. Picked up Locker to Johnson, his favorite target today. The freshman with his sixth catch gets out of bounds. Take a look at our Pacific Life game summary. The total yards on the ground. Trojans with over 200. Yeah, the turnovers are the story. And you look at those rush yards. A lot of those rush yards came early in the first two or three possessions for USC. How and about the 0 for 9, though, David? Third down. Yeah, and, and that, that is Aaron Corp. That's Aaron Corp getting his first start at Husky Stadium. Third down, blocker batted down at the line of scrimmage. And will bring up fourth. Malik Jackson back up, defensive end. Got a hand up. So Corp gets ready to come back in. And Williams back at his own 20 away from the punt. Uh, will Mayhem. And a good punt. Williams from his own 15. Got through one, got through another. Here he comes. Breaks another tackle and is still up. Finally brought down at the 44. So he gives USC great field position to start. What about 28 yards? We got our city inside view little video look at the turnovers that one giving Washington the ball at the 35 then at the 12 a big one yeah Havili giving up the football Trojans in the red zone and then the pick Butler reading the eyes of a young Aaron Corp but that return by Damian Williams is huge it opens up the playbook for Jeremy Bates on this drive you remember a week ago it was with seven minutes and 15 seconds left on the clock that the Trojans took over and started that long march down the field. Seven minute mark, McKnight lost the football. Trojans have it at the 22, at least they did initially. David Osbury came up with the fumble as McKnight just left it on the turf. Well, this is a great hustle play by offensive players, not quitting on the play. Joe McKnight, you think he's a step from taking it all the way, but you trail the play. And just a great job of making the recovery. Huskies, a, a golden opportunity to turn this football back in their favor. Clinton Richardson was the man who knocked it loose. Osbury comes up with it, and so it's first and 10 at the 22. Johnson to the 10. It'll be first down. We'll see if they mark it right outside the 10 or not. Yeah, this is what this offensive line had to do. The game on the line, just as they did a week ago, the offensive line took over. They took control of the football game, and it makes a lot. It makes it a lot easier to get Aaron Corp some success when you're controlling the line of scrimmage. Johnson is deep as the tailback. Dumped right at the line of scrimmage. You think about that punt return, Damian Williams giving the offense finally good field position with that return. Uh, and then the big burst by McKnight on first down. Well, it was huge. Uh, the punt return gets you out. You're comfortable near midfield. You don't have to worry about turnovers. And then obviously Joe McKnight ripping off that big game. The offensive line for USC looks like they're up to the task. Washington trying to force a field goal attempt. Court to run, almost got away. 
And brought down by Richardson, the man who knocked the ball loose from McKnight. A gain of five. Well, Quentin Richardson might have saved the game for the Huskies here. Watch the cornerback dip inside. First, he leaves his feet on the arm fake, and then he's able to regain his balance and make a play against a very efficient runner at quarterback. Third and six, they can get a first down without getting to the end zone. Inside the one, they'd have to get. Long count. Johnson, nowhere to run. Lost a yard or two. Donald Butler is at a huge game for the dogs. Now you really had to feel that USC would run the ball there on third down. The success that they had had during this drive, keeping the ball on the ground. The linebackers for Washington have had a great game. Jordan Condon comes on. Hit one from 42 yards. This is from 25. And good. And silence takes over inside Husky Stadium. Tied up at 13. Back in Seattle, a reminder the chase begins. The chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup at New Hampshire. Coverage beginning tomorrow at 1 o'clock Eastern on ABC. So the, uh, the standings, Mark Martin, the leader, and then uh, Tony Stewart and Jimmy Johnson right after that. Johnson looking for his fourth. Thirteen all. Four oh seven left. Richardson lost it. He gets it back. Breaks to the outside across the thirty and is drilled out of bounds. So now Washington takes over. You think about this situation. Jake Locker. Four minutes left in the game. You're tied up at 13. And this is the situation you think about your entire career. Well, and it's a it's not a must-have drive, but you saw the way that the USC offensive line was working up front on that last drive. I would not be comfortable punting the ball back to the Trojans. I think this is a drive that Jake Locker has to get back in the pocket. He's going to have to get some things done with his arm. It's a matter of this Washington offensive line. Can they protect him? No, they can't, at least not on first down. Nick Perry in there in a hurry and a loss of 12. Yeah, Nick Perry has had a nice football game, and he's had a lot of success coming inside on blitzes. And he's overpowering a deep, an offensive tackle in Big Ben Osai. And when he caught Locker in the backfield, he made sure of the tackle. Great play by a young outside linebacker. So now you're in those dangerous areas. Second and 22, and you're back just outside your own 20. Another low snap. He's had to deal with a number of those today. Holt out of the backfield. Couple of nice moves. And brought down at the 27. Drew McAllister on the hit. He got the start today for Taylor Mays, who is out with a knee. Uh, you get some yard backs on the com completion, and you get yourself into a more manageable third and long situation, but this is a play you have to have if you're Washington. And it's the type of situation that Pete Carroll and his defense has feasted on for years. And nobody knows that better than that man with his back to you. But even even if you know they're going to bring them, you don't know from which direction are they going to bring them. Well, in its own pressure, and, and Pete Carroll defenses always have a safety in the middle of the field, deep, catching everything, the center fielder. They play zone behind the pressure, so even if you pick up the pressure, and even if you get the ball out cleanly, they're still in pretty good shape. They're not chasing man-to-man -man assignments. They're going to be able to rally to the football to pick up this this first down in this situation terry you're going to need protection you're going to need a great throw by jake locker and it's just very tough against usc in third and long usc burned the timeout so both teams now with two timeouts left with 303 remaining so great action here this has been a heck of a game Act and opener for these guys and texas tech number two texas at eight o'clock eastern 
5 Pacific. ABC Saturday Night Football presented by Southwest Airlines coming your way tonight. And you know, as he breaks the huddle, Jake Locker is thinking, uh, first and foremost, I have to make sure that I don't turn the ball over in my own end. Johnson, Colt, Kirsch, the wideouts. Locker over the middle. Got his man. Big time throw and catch for a first down. Jermaine Kirsch held on. How's that for points? Well, the protection held up. This is just a seam route from Curse. And watch Locker get back, get set, and deliver the ball right on the money down the center of the football field. Big time throw. I mean, if they don't pick that up, you're punting with just under three minutes left. Giving it back to the Trojan offense. Hold the big gain over the right side to the 43. A couple of yards shy of a first down. And now Washington, because they picked up that big third down, they can work the clock in their favor. The clock was working against them. It looked like they are going to have to punt the ball back to USC. They have two timeouts. Time isn't a factor here. They only need a, a field goal. They're comfortable letting this clock wind down inside two minutes. Eric Folk. You saw the smile on his face as someone came up and he was like, yeah, I know. His wall is 46 yards. That was earlier today. They'll keep it in the hands of Colt. Back to the line of scrimmage. Clock continues to run. Uh, this is an interesting play call for Steve Sarkeesian. You know, it's, it looks like it's going to be about a third and two. Maybe a long two. I think you have to put the ball in the hands of Jake Locker and get him outside, give him a run pass option. You got to play your strongest cards. I'd be very surprised if we don't see play action here with the Jake Locker roll. There he goes. Gonna tuck it and run. Will he get there? Yes. On the dive. to 10 Washington. Well, Jake Locker sets this up with a beautiful play fake and then he has number 93 Griffin in a bind. Not many defensive ends can track down Locker in the open field. So we hit the minute mark. First down at the 39. And a flag. Yeah, it looks like Washington is going to make a Full big start, mistake here. Number 71 on the offense. The five-yard penalty. First down. Clock will start and they're ready for play. Cody Hobb and the right tackle moved. That is a devastating mistake inside a minute to go. Ten penalties on the day for Washington. We're under a minute. Clock continues to run. Pass situation. Walker, good drop. Throws this side. Johnson almost lost it. Got it back to the 35. Inbounds, though. Now, Locker has the arm strength to make those throws outside. You know, that is a dangerous throw for most college quarterbacks. And he gets the ball out with velocity and the timing and turns it into a safe throw to his young true freshman. True freshman that has seven catches this afternoon. Harris, bit banged up. Timeout Washington with 39 seconds left. On the verge, perhaps, of a huge upset. Steve Sarkeesian, who's taken over as the head coach at a school that went 0-12 last year. And, of course, you know, he was the offensive coordinator for Pete Carroll. He helped them build the dynasty in Los Angeles. And now... Uh, maybe taking away Pete Carroll's opportunity, you never know, in a national championship. 41 seconds left and uh, a 13-13 game. David Norrie, it has been a great one, too. And uh, it, how, where did the performance from the defense come from? Washington, one of the worst defenses last year in the country. Well, I think Nick Holt has had a great game plan. Eight-man front. They've refused to let USC control the ball on the ground throughout this game. Uh, the Trojans have had some success. 
but I, I just think they've hung on tooth and nail. They've rallied to the football, and, and right now, field goal drive about 52 yards is in the back pocket for the Husky. Walker's been big today. Scrambling, looking to throw on the run, complete to the 15. Huge catch. Curse, but there is a flag down at the 45. We'll see. against USC. The play of the game. Jake Locker on the roll. Spicer tracking him down in the pocket. And how about this throw? Hit comes late. But the call's not going to be the factor. The completion is. see with two timeouts and it wouldn't be beyond Washington to take a knee here or to use a couple quarterback sneaks you don't want to risk a turnover USC only has two timeouts for your three downs before you set up the field goal and you want to bleed clock here you want to take the clock all the way down inside five seconds and bring your field goal kicker on the field seven straight Pac-10 titles for Pete Carroll and the Trojans 33 seconds left. They'll keep it on the ground. Polk hit hard just inside the five. Luther Brown on the stop. I think Pete Carroll had to make a decision there as to whether he wanted to let Washington score. And over 30 seconds left in the game. You have two timeouts. I mean, that wouldn't be highly unusual to let Washington score there instead of watch them tick the clock down inside five seconds and march their field goal kicker on the field. Eric Folk is the field goal kicker, the sophomore from Woodland Hills, California. Here he comes. Seven seconds left, and on second and goal, they're going to kick it. And I think Pete Carroll just wanted to dispense with the pleasantries and, and get to the field goal. Uh, no use using the timeouts because he knows Steve Sarkeesian. Sarkeesian's not going to put the football in the air. So Folk, whose brother is the kicker in Dallas. One of the nation's top high school kickers getting his chance on the college level now and trying to beat Pete Carroll here in Seattle. A 22-yard try. As USC needs a timeout here. On the line. He got it. Huskies up by three. With three left. When the season began, with all that USC had to replace on defense, people were asking the question, if not now, when? When is their reign going to come to an end? Well, it's not over yet, but who would have thought that it would be Jake Locker, Steve Sarkeesian, and Washington, maybe taking them down in the Pac-10 Open? This was a team that was 0-12 a year ago. The first Pac-10 team since 1980 to go winless. Only one other team since the advent of the BCS had gone winless in the major six conferences. That was Duke. And that 0-12 season seems a long time ago now. Sarkeesian coming up to Seattle from L.A. where he was the offensive coordinator. Good friends still with Pete Carroll. If this holds, you wonder who will make that phone call. Well, you know the Trojans have, have practiced this right here. They're going to try to keep the ball alive as long as they can. They squib it to the 18. Johnson bringing it back. Stefan looking for room. McKnight trying to throw a block. Ball is up. Still running. Flag is down. That's it anywhere. Huskies upset the Trojans here in Seattle. And 
David, the win over Idaho last week snapped a 15-game losing streak. Even with that momentum, as much as they wanted to believe, I'm not sure many did here. What an effort from the defense. What an effort from Jake Locker. Now Jake Locker had to be the key to this victory. And the plays that he made, the big third down conversions on that last drive, unbelievable. Take it in. Like a Hollywood script. Locker today, 21 of 35 for 237 yards. Remember, he ran in from four yards out and got the first six on the board for the Huskies. He made two throws to Curse on that final drive that were as good as you'll see at this level. The third and long on the seam route and then rolling to his right. The play that put Washington in place for the upset down in the red zone. Jake Locker has come of age. Brent, what do you have? Come on, man. Coach, coach, you sent Eric Folk off for that last kick. What was going through your mind? Well, our kids played really hard. I don't know if we played very good, we played hard. It's an amazing game. What made the difference down 10 nothing? I don't know. Our kids just played hard, you know? Got to give them all the credit in the world. They're a great team. We played hard. How do you best describe this scene? That's unbelievable, man. This is what we were hoping for. We're getting there. We're trying hard. Didn't take long. Week three. Congratulations, coach. All right, Clint, and you think back to a week ago, Matt Barkley's drive against Ohio State is one that will be remembered for a long time by Trojan fans, and this one by Locker, and the 2009 version of the Huskies will be remembered forever, baby. I mean, this is a takedown number three. You take down the Trojans. So many storing lines here with Sarkeesian beating Pete Carroll. The 0 and 15 streak, and they get the win. Yeah, I don't think anybody would have believed it. And the way that this Washington team responded inside five minutes to go, the game on the line, unbelievable. 16 13, the final. Washington wins it. For David and Quinn, our entire crew, I'm Terry again. And let's go back to our Times Square studio in John Saunders.